Hey, what's up guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan Battle video. So first things first, I want to wish all of you guys a happy new year. I hope 2020 brings you amazing things both in real life but also in Dokkan as well. Now 2019 was a very good year for Dokkan both in terms of new memes. My personal favorite was probably the twerking be free. If you guys <laughs> don't know what I'm talking about, definitely go check it out after this video. And of course, we got some fantastic banners too, like the LR Super Saiyan 4s, the Trunks and Zamasu banners, the uh, 300 million downloads, LR Gohan and LR Cell. Even though they weren't that good for me, I know a lot of people pulled mad fire on them. And uh, yeah, it was just a very, very good year for this game. But all of that stuff, is now in the past and the time has come for us to look forward to the future of global in 2020. So in today's video, we're gonna quickly go over all the banners that we know are coming to global in the new year and uh, help you guys decide which banners and units you wanna save your stones for and how you wanna best budget your stones in 2020. So real quick before we get started, a few things I wanna get out of the way. Number one is that the featured units on these banners could be different when the banners drop on global. Even though it's fairly uncommon these days, Bandai has been known to swap certain units in and out for the global releases, so it's definitely a possibility. Number two is the release order or release schedule for these banners. All we really know right now is that Fizz Piccolo is next, but besides that, uh, everything else is a bit of a toss up. So I'll be showing you guys the banners in the order they came out on JP, but I have no idea what the actual order will be when it comes to global. Number three is that unfortunately, I can only talk about the banners we know about right now, which means the banners that came out on JP earlier in this year. Um, I'm sure 2020 will bring us a ton of other amazing and super hype banners you'll want to save your stones for. Some highlights will be the uh, five year anniversary banners. I believe that's happening in February for JP and then sometime in July for uh, Global. And then there's also gonna be the Golden Week banners, uh, the next download celebration, which is uh, gonna be 350 million downloads, I guess this time. And there could also be some other like Global First units that I definitely don't know about. So sadly, I can't talk about them in this video, but make sure you guys keep those in mind as we progress through the year and progress through this video, all right? And uh, oh, one last thing, it's not a disclaimer, but I wanna give a big shout out to good friends of the channel and also the sponsor of today's video, Ultra Dokkan Discount. They are the largest online store for stacked Dokkan accounts with up to 6,000 stones each and uh, their prices are all super reasonable. They've got accounts for Global and JP, Android, and iOS. So if that sounds like something you're into, then definitely check them out in my description down below. And for a limited time, my discount code TIGER will get you 20% off your entire purchase. Ultra Dokkan Discount has been a very good friend of the channel for quite some time. Their service is second to none, so you guys can definitely trust them. And now with all of that out of the way, let's jump into the main topic at hand, the global 2020 banner preview, starting with the first confirmed banner of the year dropping on January 5th, the Fizz Transforming Piccolo Dokkan Festival. So this banner featured, on JP at least, the Transforming Piccolo himself right here, but also a new non dokkan Fest AGL Nail, who is very good, so definitely don't sleep on him. And it also came with the Fizz Transforming Vegeta, the AGL Metal Cooler, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, uh, AGL Turles, and also STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. Overall, I would say this banner is pretty good. It's quite solid. All these units, of course, are great units, but that being said, a lot of them have been featured recently. This guy was available through the uh, red dragon stone so I feel like for most people it's either going to be a skip or just go fairly easy because there are better Dokkan Fest banners right around the corner um, and I personally will not be going too hard for this banner either. Now let's talk about the Piccolo real quick so that you guys know exactly what he's all about. Starting with his leader skill, Namekian's category key plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 170% or worthy rivals category key plus 3, 
HP, attack, and defense plus 150%. His super attack raises defense and causes immense damage. And his passive is attack and defense plus 100%, recovers 7% HP whenever HP is 77% or less, and foresees enemies' super attack. His active skill is uh, fusion with Kami. Fuses with Kami can be activated when HP is 70% or more with another Namekian's category ally on the team, starting from the fourth turn from the start of battle once only, not too bad of a condition overall. Links, Z Fighters, Experienced Fighters, Namekians, Brainiacs, Shocking Speed, Cold Judgment, and Fierce Battle, and his categories are Namekians, Worthy Rivals, Android slash Cell Saga, and Bond of Master and Disciple. And once you pop that active skill, he will become Piccolo fused with Kami. His super attack is now Light Grenade, greatly raises attack for one turn, and causes immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. His passive is Super Strength, attack and defense plus 120%, reduces damage received by 40%, chance of performing a critical hit 10% to 40%, the more HP remaining, the greater the boost, recovers 10% HP whenever HP is 77% or less, and foresees enemy super attack. Everything else does stay the same, so this Piccolo essentially does a little bit of everything. He is a very good unit, but that being said, I don't find his banner to be you know, overly exciting. If I were to rate it on a scale of 1 to 7 star Dragon Balls, 1 star being, you know, a definite skip, and 7 stars being a must summon, I would give this one, at this point, probably a 4 star Dragon Ball, um, which is solid, it's good, but definitely skippable. Um, if it was, you know, earlier in the year, maybe like a couple months ago, I would have given this a better rating, but considering the banners and the featured units recently, um, the value of this banner is definitely lower than it was when it first came out on JP. So four stars out of seven, not too bad, but uh, not amazing either. All right, next up, we have the Int Future Gohan, which could very well be the Dokkan Fest after the Piccolo, but like I said, I don't know for sure, right? So this banner featured the Gohan himself, but also a new Tech Trunks who is pretty solid as well. All of these new non Dokkan Fest units with these banners are uh, all pretty good. Of course, they're not as good as the main new Dokkan Fest exclusive, but they are respectable. Uh, it also brought Tech Hit back. Now this might be swapped out for another unit depending on when this banner comes out since we just got Tech Hit recently for the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku banner, but uh, it could also stay the same because generally speaking these days Bandai doesn't change too many things when it comes to global and JP banners. And also the STR Super Buu who is okay, Fizz uh, Future Gohan, pretty underwhelming, um, Fizz Super Vegito still an amazing unit, and Int UI Goku super old but uh, still okay. So I would say this banner probably gets around the same rating honestly as the uh, Piccolo banner. So I'm gonna go with a four star Dragon Ball out of seven. And uh, real quick, let me just be clear, this is all my personal opinion. You guys can totally disagree with me. I mean, first of all, this Dragon, Dragon Ball star rating is completely random, right? Like I just made it up on the spot. So um, don't get too mad if your favorite banner or your favorite unit doesn't get a high enough rating. This is just, you know, my personal opinion. I don't think this banner is uh, super hype either. I don't think the value is super high. Four stars is basically solid, but skippable. Once again, Int Future Gohan is a great unit though. His leader skill is Bond of Master and Disciple or Hybrid Saiyan. So once again, a dual category leader. Uh, key plus three, HP attack plus 170% and defense plus 130%. Super attack greatly raises defense for one turn and causes immense damage. Passive determined warrior attack and defense plus 100% reduces damage received by 58% when HP is 58% or less. Bond of master and disciple category allies key plus one attack and defense plus 30% and transform when conditions are met. So he is actually a amazing support unit for his own category on top of uh, being able to reduce damage by a ton and also still getting a respectable attack and defense boost. His transformation conditions are uh, you have to be below 58%, oh sorry, no, you have to be above 58% uh, HP or more. 
and there is an ally on the team whose name includes Trunks, uh, Kid and GT are excluded, starting from the fourth turn from the start of battle. Links are all in the family, Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan, and Li Saiyan Lineage, Cold Judgment, Experienced Fighters, Dismal Future, and Fierce Battle. Categories are Hybrid Saiyans, Future Saga, Transformation Boost, Goku's Family, Super Saiyans, Android slash Cell Saga, and Bond of Master and Disciple. Once he transforms, he goes Super Saiyan. His super attack raises attack and causes immense damage. His passive is attack plus 100%, reduces damage received by 58% with no conditions this time, so he is not going to be taking a lot of damage at all. Key plus 1 and attack and defense plus 30% per Bond and Master of Master and Disciple category ally attacking in the same turn, so if you have um, a full team of those guys, then he should be getting uh, this boost times three, I believe, right? Because that includes himself. Let me just check real quick if it says anything about that. Uh, it doesn't say anything about that in the extra notes, but I believe it also counts himself as part of this category to get that boost. So he should be getting this times three, I think, I think. Launches an additional super attack when there is a Android category enemy. Makes sense for future Gohan. And his links that change are uh, Super Saiyan and Golden Warrior, which uh, are changed from... I believe uh, Saiyan Lineage or Cold Judgment, I'm not really sure. Okay, you know what, doesn't really matter, he gets Super Saiyan and Golden Warrior, which is good. And his categories of course are the same. So uh, yeah, this guy is really good once again, just like the uh, Piccolo, I just think unfortunately both of their banners are not super super hype, but that's just my personal opinion. So my recommendation is once again a couple hundred stones, like 100, 200, and then call it a day. Moving on now to a significantly more hype banner, which is the STR Transforming Coolers banner. And this guy is definitely worthy of all the praise he has received, all of the hype that's around him because he is just so damn good. And on top of that, his banner is, I think, better than the other two guys too. So moving down here, we have the cooler himself who transforms into Final form cooler once you pop his active skill. And then we also have a new Thouser that becomes the uh, cooler's armored squadron. And it also brought back the Namek transforming Goku. Now, this could be the case um, on Global 2, depending on when the banner comes out. I feel like it's going to be, but if this banner, you know, gets delayed a lot, which I hope it doesn't, then uh, this guy might have already come back. But let's say that we get this banner within the next, like, Within the next like month or two, maybe three months at the most, then this will probably be the first time that Namek Goku comes back to global as well, which just significantly enhances the hype of this banner since um, you guys know how good this Namek Goku is, right? So it's got him, it's got Kid Goku, who is good. I, f I feel like a little bit underrated, I feel like a little bit underused, but uh, very strong and actually better on global than JP because his active skill actually gets a 100% boost over uh, JP's active skill. So I think the damage multiplier for his active skill on JP is like 550% and on global right now it's 650% according to the Dokkan wiki, which I don't know if, if that was like intentional if it, or if it was a mistake, but that is the case at the moment of this recording. And also Meta Cooler's back. That's cool. Angel Golden Frieza, sure, why not? Still a great unit. Not really something that I look forward to pulling because he is done for me, but um, great nonetheless, right? Good unit. And also Fizz Final Form Cooler. The reason he's here is basically because of the cooler theme and also the fact that he is a great linking partner for the STR cooler. So uh, that's the banner overall. I would give this like a very solid... Um, you know, like these two guys at the end are not that hype, but I would still give it like a six star. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a six star Dragon Ball out of seven because, um, just because of the cooler himself, man. Honestly, cool, cooler himself and then coupled with the Namek Goku makes this banner just ridiculously awesome in my opinion. It's not perfect by any means, but six out of seven is what I'm willing to give it. Let's talk about the cooler though. So his leader skill is Conquest of Terror, which is a new category, or Transformation Boost. So he replaces the uh, STR Super Boo, which I know a lot of people are very happy about because uh, people didn't love running that Super Boo. 
uh, category, key plus 3. HP plus 130% and attack and defense plus 170%. Uh, super attack, destructive ray, causes immense damage and lowers attack and defense. Uh, passive skill, attack and defense plus 100%, transformation boost category allies keep plus 2, and attack and defense plus 30% when facing only one enemy, and conquest of terror category allies keep plus 2, attack and defense plus 50% when facing two or more enemies. His active skill, he transforms into Final Form Cooler, can be activated when there is a Pure Saiyans or Hybrid Saiyans category enemy starting from the third turn from the start of battle, or when facing only one enemy starting from the sixth turn from the start of battle. Link's strongest clan in space, thirst for conquest, big bad bosses, brutal beatdown, metamorphosis, universe's most malevolent, and fierce battle categories, movie bosses, transformation boost, wicked bloodline, conquest of terror, and target Goku. Now that won't be available until the uh, Dokkan Fest Android 13 comes out, but uh, he is part of that category. And once you pop that active skill, he goes into his final form, and his super attack is uh, raises attack and causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense. Passive, key plus 3, attack and defense plus 180% launches an additional attack that has a medium chance of becoming a super attack and performs a critical hit when there is a pure Saiyans or hybrid Saiyans category enemy. And once again, there are a lot of pure Saiyans or hybrid Saiyans category enemies out there. So uh, getting a guaranteed crit against those guys is quite insane. In addition to, of course, the fact that he launches two guaranteed attacks, possibly a third, and uh, key plus three and attack and defense plus 180% is a huge boost too. So uh, this guy is just ridiculous. I mean, he also stacks attack infinitely. Um, Pre-transformation, he is an amazing support unit, so you get to choose whether or not you want him to be more supportive or just a monster on his own. Um, I, I, I love this unit so much, guys, and he is rightly considered by a lot of people to be the best TUR in the entire game, and I would put him right up there. I don't know if he is the best, I don't know if he's like number one, I'll have to test him out more when he comes to global, but uh, I can assure you, he is ridiculously, ridiculously good. Definitely, if you guys are saving for a just regular Dokkan Fest unit, he's the one to save your stones for. Trust me, he, he is definitely worth it. His banner is worth it. Uh, once again, six stars out of seven. All right, six star Dragon Ball out of seven. Okay, so uh, that's all you need to know about this guy right here. We're gonna move on now to the next banner, which is actually a legendary summon banner for the LR Super Saiyan God Goku. So I'm not gonna go over each of these you know, units like individually or call them out because there are a lot of them. Um, you guys know how I feel about legendary summon banners overall. I think they're not very good value for your stones. I think you shouldn't spend too many stones on them and uh, if you guys can, I mean, if you're not like super, super hyped about this Super Saiyan God Goku, I would straight up just say skip it, man. I would say skip any legendary summon banner. Even the one that's currently on global might be a little bit late to suggest that. I mean, I've already talked about this before, but I would say skip that LR Kale and Khalifla banner too, just because your chances of getting shafted are way too high. Um, the chances of you pulling the new LR is just too damn low. So uh, I would say not great value. I would give it like a two star Dragon Ball out of seven. And the only reason I give it a two star is because, um, you know, these guys are still pretty solid, right? Like this Gawasu is pretty nice. Um, <laughs> maybe even a one star. I don't really know. I don't really know. One or two stars. I, I don't I don't love these banners, honestly. That's just me though. That's just me. Uh, the Super Saiyan God Goku himself is, is good, but he's also not super broken like people would have wanted him to be. A lot of people were expecting like a super, super busted card because it's Super Saiyan God Goku because we've been waiting for him for so long, but uh, he ended up just being a really good LR, but not a really busted one, like some of the recent ones we've seen, like the Kaelin Khalifla, or the Gobros, or, you know, Goku and Frieza, and so on and so forth, right? So his leader skill is Pure Saiyans or Hybrid Saiyans, category key plus 4, HP, attack and defense plus 130%, even though it's only 130%, um, the fact that you can run these two categories together is ridiculous. Um, so really good leader skill right there. Super attack is uh, Limit Breaker Kamehameha for the 12 key, 
and Dragon Smash for the 18 key. So 12 key greatly raises attack and defense for one turn and causes colossal damage, and his 18 key greatly raises attack and defense for three turns and causes mega colossal damage and greatly lowers defense. His passive is attack plus 77%, key plus one up to five, and defense plus, uh, plus 11% up to 55% per pure sands or hybrid sands category ally on the team excluding himself high chance of evading enemies attack including super attack and high chance of performing a critical hit for seven turns from start of battle which there was not a term restriction on that but uh, when you do have this active that's pretty crazy because high chance is a 50 percent chance to perform a critical and also um, of course, high chance to evade enemies uh, attack is another 50% chance to evade. So uh, yeah, overall, he's very good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like trying to diss him or anything like that. I just don't think that he's as good as some of the other LRs we've seen recently. And I don't think he's worth um, spending a lot of stones on for his banner. So Link's Godly Power, Warrior God, Super Saiyan, Kamehameha, Over in a Flash, Shattering the Limit, and Legendary Power. Categories, Realm of Gods, Pure Saiyans, Goku's Family, and Kamehameha. And that is the Goku right there. Moving on now to this uh, Dragon Ball Heroes banner. Not going to spend too much time on this one, but basically we got a lot of uh, new Dragon Ball Heroes units. Some highlights are the Golden Cooler. We got this Cumber right here. We got um, this Fu, who is pretty solid, and also these guys should be getting Awakenings when this banner drops on Global 2, and their Awakenings are quite ridiculous. I'm not going to go over them individually, just because it would make this video way too long, and it's already a pretty damn long video. Uh, we're going into like 20 plus minutes now, so <laughs> all I'll say is um, I'm probably going to be summoning on this banner just because they do have that guaranteed featured unit mechanic, so it's going to be pretty easy to get at least a few of these units. Um, and they're all, you know, a lot of them are very solid, but uh, they're not must-haves by any means. So if you guys like, you know, these units, you guys like these characters, you guys are fans of Dragon Ball Heroes, then go for it. Um, she gets an Awakening too. This uh, Supreme Kai of Time gets an Awakening as well. So uh, yeah, I would say go for it, but don't spend too many stones either. Maybe like 300 stones at most. Of course, it varies depending on how big of a whale you are if you're free to play maybe 200, maybe 150, I don't really know, it's up to you, but um, definitely a skippable banner once again, but not a terrible idea to summon because your chances of pulling uh, a number of these units is pretty high, alright? Next up, we have the Android 13 Dokkan Festival, and uh, this banner featured the Android 13, also a new is Trunks, not really sure why we're getting so many Trunkses, or why JP got so many trunks this last year, but uh, clearly someone over at Bandai loves trunks. So there's another new trunks right here. Uh, we have the Piccolo returning for this banner. We have the MVP 17. We have uh, Super Saiyan 3 full power, or did I say 3? Full power Super Saiyan 4, um, Goku, AGL Turles, and also uh, STR Jiren. Overall, not a bad banner. Um, I would say probably value wise similar to the Piccolo and future Gohan banner, so a 4 star Dragon Ball out of 7. So his leader skill is target Goku or Android's category key plus 3, HP plus 130%, and attack and defense plus 170%, super attack, deadly crash, causes immense damage and greatly lowers defense with a medium chance of stunning the enemy, passive attack and defense plus 130%, Android's category key plus 2, attack and defense plus 30%, attacks connect against all enemies, so I believe that means that enemies cannot dodge your attacks, and transform when conditions are met. Transformation conditions, so this is not an active skill, it's just a regular transformation like Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta or UI Goku. He absorbs Android 14 and Android 15's parts and transforms with another two or more Android category allies on the team starting from the fifth turn from the start of battle. So if you're running a Android's team, then this is, you know, very easy to fulfill, but uh, it's fifth turn uh, onward, which, you know, it, it's quite a few turns. It's quite a few turns. I don't love that, but could be worse. Links are R and R, R, R Army. Red Ribbon Army, Android Assault, Metamorphosis, Big Bad Bosses, Nightmare, Fear and Faith, and Fierce Battle. Categories are Movie Bosses, Androids, Transformation Boost, Artificial Lifeforms, and Target Goku. And once he transforms into 
uh, Fusion 13 or Super 13, whatever you want to call him. His super attack causes immense damage and massively lowers defense with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. Uh, passive key plus 3, attack and defense plus 130% plus an additional attack and defense plus 13% per target Goku category ally on the team. Connects uh, attack attacks connect against all enemies and disables enemies guard which allows him to do even more damage and performs a critical hit when facing an enemy whose name includes Goku but not including youth Ginyu and junior all right and uh, links and categories are the same so that is the 13 right there uh, good tank good damage dealer good support unit for the uh, androids category pre-transformation and uh, he's good he's good I, I say that a lot don't I like <laughs> I'm just like yo good unit man solid unit but uh, that is a pretty accurate description of him his banner is solid as well exact same rating as the piccolo and future gohan banners a four star dragon ball out of seven and now we're going to move on to the next banner on the schedule, which is the uh, double rates, the Rising Dragon Carnival banner for the AGL Spirit Bomb Absorbed LR Goku. And this guy is actually ridiculously strong. Um, unfortunately, he does come on a uh, Legendary Summon banner, but fortunately, it's a double rates Legendary Summon banner. So your chances of pulling him are significantly higher than a regular Legendary Summon banner. And of course, your rates to pull other LRs that are not featured is uh, twice as high as well. So if you guys are gonna be summoning on any Legendary Summon banner or for any LR on an LR banner, um, I would say this one would be it, man. I would give this like a solid, mm, maybe four stars again. I feel like that just feels like a good place to be, you know? <laughs> Maybe I should have thought out the rating system a little bit more, but overall, you know, it's still the same kind of featured units as your standard legendary summon banner, just with double rates. So once again, you have a higher chance of pulling him, you have a higher chance of pulling other um, LRs that are not featured. So um, it is a tier above your standard legendary summon banner. Now, moving on to the Goku himself, let's talk about him real quick. A, he is a Super Saiyan category leader, key plus 4, HP, attack, and defense plus 130%. Super attack for the 12 key is Energy Meteor, and 18 key is Spirit Bomb Super Saiyan. So the 12 key greatly raises defense for one turn and causes colossal damage, and the 18 key causes mega colossal damage and lowers attack and defense and seals super attack. His passive is Super Saiyans fighting together. Attack and defense plus 59%, randomly changes key spheres of a certain type to Rainbow Key Spheres, Key plus 2 in addition per Rainbow Key Sphere obtained, plus an additional attack and defense plus 7% per Key Sphere obtained, and attack plus 7% per Key Sphere obtained per Super Saiyan categories, uh, Super Saiyan's category ally attacking in the same turn, excluding self. So the way this um, last part of his passive works is that if there are three, um, yeah, if there are two other Super Saiyans category allies attacking the same turn, then he will be getting attack plus 21% um, right here. Attack plus 21% per key sphere obtained, which is just insane, guys. That is that is that is ridiculous. That is out of control. Um, in addition to, of course, his LR stats and uh, that 59% already he gets right off the bat. Um, he does some crazy, crazy damage, like just some ridiculously out of this world damage. Uh, his defense is not bad, his defense is not bad, but he's mainly there for the damage. Um, Link, Super Saiyan, Golden Warrior, Saiyan Warrior Race, Experienced Fighters, Prepare for Battle, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power, and his categories are Pure Saiyans, Movie Heroes, Goku's Family, and Super Saiyans. So that is the LR Spirit Bomb Absorbed Goku for you. Next up, we have another uh, Rising Dragon Carnival banner. Um, and this one actually I think came out earlier in the year than some of the other banners we already talked about But I wasn't really you know, sure like where to place this because I'm not really even sure if we're gonna get it But if we do it's a double rates um, I guess waifu or peppy gals banner. It's got Oceanus Shenron But I don't think she's good enough at the launch. I don't think they're good enough to warrant summons to be honest so um, if this banner comes out on global at some point, I would say straight up skip it. I give us a one star, literally just the worst rating possible. One star Dragon Ball out of seven. Um, if you're gonna summon on a double rates banner, it, it's gotta be this one. 
It's gotta be this one. I think we are gonna get this one at some point this year. Um, this one is a question mark, but if it does come out, skip it. Spend your stones on the LR Goku banner and uh, you'll be better off for it, all right? So now we're gonna move on to the current Dual Dual Confess that is still active on JP. The uh, Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, well, I mean, he's Super Saiyan 2 here, but he transforms into Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, and also the transforming Majin Vegeta banners. So I guess we'll start with the Goku first. His banner includes himself, the uh, transforming Goku, but also a new Saiyan man right here. And also, LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku, which I don't think a lot of people saw coming. I don't think anybody saw coming, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and it definitely elevates the value of this banner significantly, right? When you include one of the best units in the game. Um, the rest of the unit, or the rest of the banner is uh, a little bit mm, lackluster, I would say. This transforming Goku has been featured way too many times. Int UI Goku, super old, featured a lot, so not super exciting. Uh, tech Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, 120 lead, it's just not that exciting, you know what I mean? And then we have Super Saiyan 4 Goku, who once again, 120 lead, old, not that exciting. I think the fact that they included the Super Saiyan 4, um, LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku is, they, they felt like probably it made up for the rest of the units, which is why they felt like they could include these other four, which... I mean, to be fair, is kind of the case, right? Like, when people saw the Super Saiyan 4 Goku, they were like, I don't care about these other four, but I'm still summoning because of the new Int Goku and also the LR Super Saiyan 4. So, um, Bandai knows what they're doing, man. They know what they're doing. They included this guy and they're like, yo, we can include a four other not hype at all units, at least for most people, and uh, it'll be fine. So, that's the banner right there. Oh, actually, there's also Super Saiyan Blue Kaiken Goku. Totally missed him. <laughs> totally missed him. Okay, he's uh, he's good, but still old and uh, still, you know, a lot of people will still have him. But uh, hopefully by this time, his Extreme Z Awakening will come to global as well, or will have been on global. Um, I'll give this banner five stars. Five, five star Dragon Ball out of seven. The only reason I don't elevate it to like a six or seven star um, is because, you know, these guys are just really old, right? The other five units. And uh, also, it, it, it's eight featured units versus your standard seven featured SSRs for uh, Doka Fest banners, which uh, will decrease your rates of pulling any specific featured SSR, which also is not great. So that's the Goku banner. We're gonna talk about the Goku real quick now. His leader skill is Other World Warriors, category key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 170%, or Super Saiyan 3 category key plus three, HP, attack, and defense plus 150%, and his super attack is Super Kamehameha, raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage, and his passive is attack and defense plus 100%, plus an additional defense boost by up to 60%, the more HP remaining, the greater the defense boost, and an additional attack and attack boost by up to 60%, the less HP remaining, the greater the attack boost, and plus an additional attack and defense plus 30% when performing a super attack with 3 or more key spheres obtained, transform when conditions are met. His transformation conditions are that he has to be facing one enemy, whose HP is 80% or more, starting from the third turn from the start of battle, which uh, really isn't isn't bad at all. His link skills are Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Golden Warrior, Kamehameha, Prepare for Battle, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. Categories are Majin Buu Saga, Resurrected Warriors, Super Saiyan 3, Pure Saiyans, Transformation Boost, Goku's Family, Kamehameha, Other World Warriors, and Super Saiyan 2. And once he transforms into Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, his super attack now is Super Kamehameha. Actually, does that change? Uh, it does not change, okay, but it greatly raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. His passive is attack and defense plus 120% plus an additional defense boost by up to 77%. The more HP remaining, the greater the defense boost and an additional attack boost by up to 77%. The less HP remaining, the greater the attack boost. Chance of evading enemy's attack plus 33% plus an additional attack and defense plus 33% with 3 or more key spheres obtained and attacks effective against all types with 6 or more key spheres obtained. And he gets limit breaking form and over in a flash at the expense of prepare for battle and something else. Um, what else does he lose? Prepare for battle and is it Saiyan Warrior Race? I think so. 
to, he loses Sand Warrior Race and gets Limit Breaking Form, which is fine, but he does lose Prepare for Battle in favor of Overman of Flash, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, but if you're running him on like a Super Saiyan 3 team, he should be should be just fine, right? So that's the Goku right there. And Majin Vegeta's banner is uh, kind of similar, but I think actually better. I think it's actually better than the Goku banner. So it came with Majin Vegeta, right there, or uh, Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta that transforms into Majin Vegeta. And he also brought with him a new Dabura, right there. And transforming Phase Vegeta, Super Saiyan 4 LR Vegeta, or LR Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, um, Super Saiyan 4 AGL Vegeta, uh, Int uh, Vegeta, or Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, and STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. So just like the Goku banner, a lot of these units like this guy, this guy, this guy, and um, I mean, the other ones are okay actually. So that's why I'm saying like, it, I feel like it's a little bit better than the Goku banner. I, I would give it the same rating as Goku's banner, a five star uh, Dragon Ball out of seven. Um, it does, once again, feature eight SSRs, so your rates of pulling a featured unit is lower than your standard banner, but I kind of understand, or standard like Dokkan Fest banner, but I do understand it because they are featuring the LR Super Saiyan 4s, right? So that's probably how they uh, compensate for that. So that's the Vegeta banner. Moving on to the Vegeta details now. Leader skill is Super Saiyan 2 category, key plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 170%, or Resurrected Warriors category, key plus 3, HP, attack and defense plus 150%. His super attack raises defense for one turn and causes immense damage, and passive is attack and defense plus 100%, plus an additional attack boost by up to 60%. The more HP remaining, the greater the attack boost, and additional defense boost by up to 60%, the less HP remaining, the greater the defense boost, and an additional attack and defense plus 30% when performing a super attack with three or more key spheres obtained, power up with Bobbity's magic when conditions are met, and the conditions are that he's facing one enemy whose HP is 80% or more, starting from the third turn from the start of battle, which is exactly the same as Goku's. Links are same Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Prepare for Battle, um, I skipped a few. Same Saiyan Pride, Royal Lineage, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. Categories are Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, Pure Saiyans, Vegeta's Family, Worthy Rivals, and Super Saiyan 2. Okay, so once he transforms into Majin Vegeta, his uh, super attack greatly raises defense for one turn and causes immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. His passive gives him attack and defense plus 120% plus an additional attack boost by up to 77% the more HP remaining, the greater the attack boost, and an additional defense boost by up to 77% the less HP remaining, the greater the defense boost, attacks effective against all types with 3 or more key spheres obtained, and guard activated against all attacks with 6 or more key spheres obtained and he trades uh, prepare for battle for over in a flash which uh, I still don't love just like the Goku um, even though you know over in a flash gives three key if you don't have the team of uh, units or even like at least one unit with over in a flash he's definitely gonna have some key issues since uh, that's his only viable I mean there's a royal lineage but that's his only viable key link so uh, yeah I don't love that but it is what it is um, and that is the Majin Vegeta right there. As you can see, as they've done a lot in the past, um, they basically just made the Goku and Vegeta like similar, but like, kind of inverses of each other for the boosts. And uh, that's essentially what they are. So um, pretty, pretty good banners, pretty good units, or really good units overall actually. Um, pretty solid banners, especially with the Super Saiyan 4s. Uh, I, I think I said five star Dragon Ball out of uh, seven, right? So no banner so far that we know that are coming has received seven stars, but you know what? I'm, I think I'm a bit of a um, tough critic, so it's very difficult for me to give seven stars to a banner. I think the only banner at this point that I would give seven stars to would be like, mm, probably like a step up banner. And uh, there very well could be a step up banner coming up in like one day, like literally tonight. Um, for both Global and JP for New Year's, that would get 7 stars, alright? It would get a 7 star Dragon Ball, but um, aside from that, uh, these banners are all solid for the most part, except for like that uh, Peppy Gals double rates banner, which I 
like I said, I think most people should skip that. Um, that's the preview, guys. That is the 2020 preview of all the banners that were on JP that we have yet to receive on Global that are coming for 2020, coming this year at some point. I don't know exactly when, but it is going to happen. And this video is super, super long. I do apologize, guys, for uh, how long it is. But hopefully you guys found it informative. Hopefully you guys found the extended viewing experience worthy of your time and uh, once again guys happy new year happy 2020 hope this year brings you guys everything you want both in dokkan and in real life whether it's in work school romantic life whatever it is man just have an awesome year guys i can't wait to see what 2020 holds for us for the channel for myself uh for the tiger squad all that good stuff and that's where i'm gonna cut it off i need to stop talking i've been talking for so long I need to like get some water or something like my lips are like super chapped right now I don't, I don't know if you can tell um <laughs> and that's it guys thank you so much for watching the final video i guess of 2019 2020 will bring a lot of videos too trust me at least on average one video a day possibly more and uh, as always if you guys liked the video today then make sure to like the damn video especially because it is the last video of the year make sure to give it an extra like um i mean just just like damn video that's what i'm trying to say and also if it's your first time watching me first time to the channel and you like what you see then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the tiger squad now and while you're at it hit that notification bell too so that youtube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content and that's it i'm out of here until next time I hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.